Hi, in this video I'm going to give a brief history of some of the lost buildings that have stood on a block of Main Street between Athenaeum Square and Arch Street in downtown Hartford, Connecticut. Today, this area contains two Hartford landmarks, the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art and the Hartford Municipal Building or City Hall. The block today looks very similar to the way it appeared in this view from 1915 when the municipal building on the right had just opened. North of the municipal building today is what is known as the Burr Mall, which has Alexander Calder's Stegosaurus sculpture. And north of that is the Wadsworth Athenaeum, which is actually a complex of buildings that were erected between 1844 and 1969. Let's take a look at the Athenaeum's five main constituent parts as they stand today. Then we can go back and talk about the old buildings that used to be here. On the right is a modern floor plan of the museum. The oldest section is the famous Gothic Revival-style castle-like building erected in 1844. It was designed by two famous architects of the day, Ithiel Town, and Alexander Jackson Davis. The facade survives today, but the original interior is long gone as the building was gutted and completely redone in the 20th century. We think of the Athenaeum primarily as a museum today, but when it started, it contained not just an art gallery, but the Connecticut Historical Society, the Young Men's Institute, which later became the Hartford Public Library, and the Natural History Society. These other institutions would eventually move out of the building. Also sharing space in the Athenaeum was the Watkinson Reference Library, which is now based at Trinity College. The Watkinson was located in a rear wing added to the Athenaeum in 1864 and indicated here in this floor plan from a Sanborn Atlas of 1885. The Athenaeum had a major refurbishment in 1893, and the Watkinson Wing was much expanded by the architect J. Cleveland Cady. The expansion is shown in this floor plan from a Sanborn Atlas of 1900. The floor plan also shows how the building was still being shared by the Picture Gallery, the Historical Society, Public Library, and Watkinson Library at that time. This wing does not survive today, but this postcard image shows what it looked like. There was an entrance to the wing facing Main Street. The next major addition to the Athenaeum was the Colt Memorial Wing, a gift of the philanthropist Elizabeth Jarvis Colt, widow of the firearms manufacturer Sam Colt. She ran the company after her husband's death, the wing was erected in 1910 and designed in the Tudor Revival style by Benjamin Wistar Morris. The Colt Wing connects to the much larger Morgan Memorial Building, which was funded by J.P. Morgan in honor of his father, Junius Spencer Morgan. When the Bowes Arts Building was completed in 1915, it more than doubled the Athenaeum square footage. The last two sections of the Athenaeum to be built were the Avery Memorial, opened in 1934, and the 1969 Goodwin Building, which replaced the old Watkinson addition. As I mentioned, a number of buildings had stood where these various sections of the Athenaeum were erected. Here's the area of the Athenaeum from the Hartford Atlas of 1869. We are focusing on the block bounded by Main Street on the west, Prospect Street on the east, what was then called Wadsworth Alley, now Wadsworth Square on the north, and Arch Street on the south. At the time of this map in 1869, the Athenaeum consisted of the original 1844 building and the first Watkinson addition. The Athenaeum would eventually expand to cover an area occupied by five other buildings. To the south on this map are a number of other buildings that would eventually be replaced by the Municipal Building and the Burr Mall. 
Before the first part of the Athenaeum was erected in the 1840s, the home of Jeremiah Wadsworth had stood on the corner of Main Street and Wadsworth Alley. Wadsworth was a wealthy Hartford merchant and supporter of the American Revolution. George Washington visited this house on several occasions, including during the Revolutionary War when he met the Comte de Rochambeau here in 1780. When the Athenaeum was erected, the Wadsworth House was moved from this site to the corner of Buckingham and John Streets, where it was standing when this photograph was taken. The house was torn down in 1887. Here is a portrait of Jeremiah Wadsworth and his son Daniel Wadsworth. It was Daniel Wadsworth who founded the Athenaeum, which opened to the public in 1844. In the 1790s, Jeremiah Wadsworth had two houses built on Prospect Street, one for his son Daniel and the other for his daughter Catherine. Daniel Wadsworth's home was located just behind the Athenaeum. He died in 1848. This photograph shows the house several decades later, in the years after it was remodeled in 1881 to become a home for the Hartford Club. The house was extensively remodeled again in 1904 to house the Athenaeum's Annex Gallery. On the first floor also was the children's branch of the Hartford Public Library. The Daniel Wadsworth House was demolished in 1932 to make way for the Athenaeum's Avery Memorial Building. By the way, the library's children's branch was then relocated to the Mark Twain House, where it would remain for a number of years before that house was restored as a museum. Just to the south of the Daniel Wadsworth House, was the house built for Daniel's sister, Catherine, and her husband, General Nathaniel Terry. By the time this atlas on the right was published in 1869, the Terry house was owned by the prominent Hartford businessman, Austin Dunham. The house was demolished in 1907 to make way for the rear Prospect Street facing section of the Athenaeum's Morgan Memorial Building where the Athenaeum's Colt Memorial and the Main Street facing section of the Morgan Memorial stand today, there were three buildings in 1869. The one on the south was St. John's Episcopal Church. Built in 1842, it was designed by Henry Austin of New Haven. The brownstone church had a wooden steeple which had to be removed in 1875. The church was demolished in 1907 and the congregation moved to a new building on Farmington Avenue in West Hartford. North of the church were two houses. The northernmost one, just south of the original Athenaeum building, was owned for years by Charles Brainerd, but before that it was owned by Reverend Nathan Strong, who was pastor of Hartford's first congregational church also called Center Church, from 1774 to 1816, during which time the church's current building on the other side of Main Street was dedicated in 1807. In the year before that dedication, Reverend Strong, who had been widowed twice, suffered another great bereavement, which was described by the church's historian, Reverend George Walker, in a letter that appeared in both the Hartford Times and the Hartford Current in 1893. Quote, the evening of September 6th, 1806, saw a sad concourse gathered before Dr. Strong's door. His son, John McCurdy Strong, who had just graduated at Yale College, had been returning that afternoon from a visit to Norwich. He rode his horse aboard the ferry on the East Hartford side of the river, but on the passage over, the horse took fright and leaped into the stream, and the rider was drowned. The body was recovered, and in the dusk of the evening was carried by a large company of people to the father's house. Dr. Strong, with wonderful self-control, came out upon the steps and addressed the assembly in words of such pathos and tenderness as left them dissolved in tears." Unquote. 
Just south of these buildings was the future site of Hartford's municipal building. This grandly Beaux-Arts City Hall, designed by Davison Brooks, was completed in 1915, the same year as the Athenaeum's Morgan Memorial. On the Main Street side, the municipal building replaced a group of commercial structures that had stood south of St. John's Church. This more detailed view from the 1885 Sanborn Atlas shows some of the businesses that existed here, including plumbers, a laundry, a livery stable, and lumber workshops, where sashes and blinds, as well as coffins and caskets, were produced. On the Prospect Street side was a house with a columned side portico on the south side, facing Arch Street across an extensive yard. The house has been attributed to Elias Morgan, who died in 1812, a hardware merchant, but it was most likely built by Henry Hudson, who owned paper mills in East Hartford and was a partner in the publishing firm of Hudson and Goodwin. The house was later owned by George M. Bartholomew. This federal-style house had a Second Empire-style wing with a mansard roof added to it in the 1870s. Here's the full picture of this view up Prospect Street, which for many years was one of the city's most desirable residential streets. Compare that to a postcard view several decades later, when the old houses have been replaced by the Municipal Building, the Morgan Memorial, and the Hartford Times Building, which all continue to exist today. Next, I want to take a look at two other views of the area in the 19th century, and then I'll share a quote from the sweet singer of Hartford. This illustration is derived from a photograph taken around 1870. The view looks north with Main Street on the left. It shows St. John's Episcopal Church before it lost its wooden steeple. Focusing on the Prospect Street side, here's the Hudson Bartholomew House taken down for the municipal building. There's the Terry Dunham House, taken down for the Morgan Memorial. And lastly, the Daniel Wadsworth House, taken down for the Avery Memorial. And here's the same area displayed in the 1877 Bird's Eye View of Hartford. It shows the Wadsworth Athenaeum with the 1864 Watkinson edition, St. John's Episcopal Church, the commercial buildings just south of the church, the Hudson Bartholomew House, Terry Dunham House, and again the Daniel Wadsworth House. Going back even further to a point four decades before the Athenaeum was built, there is a description of what it was like when the Wadsworth family lived here in the early years of the 19th century. As a young woman, the poet Lydia Huntley Sigourney came from Norwich to Hartford in 1805 to stay with the widowed Mrs. Jeremiah Wadsworth. During her stay at the Jeremiah Wadsworth house, she also visited the adjacent houses of his children, including that of Daniel Wadsworth, where she admired his collection of paintings and his large library. In her memoir, Letters of Life, published in 1867, Sigourney would describe the Jeremiah Wadsworth house. Built of wood, it, quote, had a pleasant vine-covered piazza with a southern exposure and had been enlarged in the rear by a range of chambers resting on heavy stone columns, which by moonlight had a picturesque effect. Connected with the court was a large garden filled with luxuriant fruit trees, a variety of herbs which were thought to have affinity with health, and the largest and most fragrant damask rose bushes. I speak more particularly of these premises because they are now occupied by the fine edifice of granite known as the Wadsworth Athenaeum, and their original aspect will soon have faded from the memory of the living." Unquote. So I want to thank you all for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please consider buying my books, A Guide to Historic Hartford, Connecticut, and Vanished Downtown Hartford. You can also subscribe to this channel, 
and visit my website, historicbuildingct.com. Thank you.